The seed is all about belief. Because again, there's not much that you have to go on uh, beyond the team and the idea. And from our standpoint, belief is really the idea that you get an investor to irrationally believe in your potential success. Uh, we refer to that as emotional resonance. Right? This idea that you've connected some way with the investor uh, that has nothing to do with the reality of your business. And so those are, there are really three keys to emotional resonance from our standpoint. Um, the first is the people. Right? You've got to be able to tell a compelling story about your team and why your team is best suited and, and actually motivated to go after a particular problem that you're solving. And sometimes that comes from the founding story. That, sometimes it comes from the fact that your team has worked together before. Oftentimes it comes from an insight you have about the market as a team that nobody else has. But there's got to be something about the team that makes the investor feel like they want to put their sweat and reputation behind you. The second is the potential. Why does it matter? You know, what impact is this going to have on the world? Um, why should the investor believe that they want this problem to be solved or they want your solution to exist? Um, and much of that is driven by the mission of the company, um, which I think a lot of founders don't spend enough time on. We always ask the question, why are the founders doing what they're doing? Um, and a lot of that is the connection between the people and the opportunity, founder market fit, as we refer to it. And so you've really got to be able to tell a story around product market fit uh, in order to get people to kind of build resonance with you. And then finally you, is proof, data. But you can forget about that, because at the seed stage, you don't have it. So you've got to focus on those first two things in order to get the seed round done. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting your investors to believe in something irrationally, getting that emotional resonance. <coughs> so that's the first step of the typical financing path. And I say typical financing path, but the reality is, is that path has changed pretty dramatically, uh, especially in the last 12 to 18 months. <clears throat> so the seed, you still only have the promise. You still got to make people believe. But at the A, what used to be based on product market fit is now based on that next level. You've got to be able to demonstrate scale in order to raise A dollars in this market. Um, and so you've got to use your seed money to both establish product market fit and demonstrate scale. And we'll talk about the implications of that a little bit more. And then finally, by the time you're ready for a Series B, you've got to be an absolute slam dunk. And the reason for this is, uh, there are many reasons for this, but the two biggest reasons that this is happening in the market is that all the later stage investors are sitting on a portfolio of assets that th they've overpaid for in most likely cases, and there's no liquidity in the market. Right? Uh, we talk about the occasional IPO here and there. If you probably just saw that Snap filed for an IPO confidentially. Um, without their numbers, in other words. Um, so there's more liquidity coming, but until now, there's been no liquidity in the market. So you've got a bunch of investors who have too many board seats, have expensive assets, some troubled companies, and so if they're gonna write another check in the next year, it's gotta be an absolute slam dunk. Hey everybody, I wanna tell you about a new product I've been using at my house and that I love. It's called Blue Apron. Yes, Blue Apron sends you a box with all the ingredients you need to make delicious food, to make a meal. It sounds a little weird at first, like, oh, they're gonna send you a box with dinner in it. It's not pre-cooked meals, no. This is portioned out recipes with a beautiful card with exactly the right amount. And what I love about this is when we were making General Tso's chicken, which I never knew how to make General Tso's chicken, but that's one of my favorite dishes. In fact, when I go for Chinese food, it's probably the number one dish I order, that and the walnuts uh, with the, you know, the walnut shrimp. I love that. But anyway, back to General Tso's. It had all the different ingredients perfectly portioned out. So following the recipe was easy. Then we made Sicilian pizza. My daughter went crazy. She kept saying, Dad, you make the best pizza in the world. You're number one at making pizza. Again, the dough came prepackaged. Everything came with the perfect portion sizes. So it's affordable. There's a ton of variety. It's super flexible. It's easy. And they have a freshness guarantee. If you ever have any problems, they just solve your problems. You know how these direct-to-consumer products work. They have to make it work for consumers or else consumers leave or consumers don't tell their friend. So all they do is optimize to make it perfect and amazing and to delight you. And Blue Apron has been delightful for us in my household. And, you know, they are very much into high-quality ingredients. That's what makes the difference. They have partnerships with 150 local farms, fisheries, and rancheries across the United States. 
Their seafood is all sourced sustainably. The, and those standards were developed with the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. Beef, chicken, pork are from responsibly raised animals. The produce is sourced from farms practicing regenerative farming. It's so easy. I know Jackie made the catfish and potato latkes, which are one of my favorite. I think I'm pronouncing that correct. So here's your call to action. Go ahead and uh, get your first three meals free. Your first three meals free with shipping. Go to blueapron.com slash twist, blueapron.com slash twist. You are going to love it. It's uh, just delicious and it's easy. And I would say it takes two thirds of the agony out of making dinner. So the only part that's left is that one third of delightful time of assembling the meal, making it fresh for your family, takes 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is. But you take out that arduous hour of preparing the proper sizes and measuring things and going to the store. It is easy and delicious. It tastes great. And uh, I'm being sincere here. Listen, I'm using it now and I use it for two or three meals a week and it's wonderful. My daughter loves it. We, she helps us pick what we're going to order. And then you have this beautiful card that explains to you, like, somebody's really working on the recipes. Who's so ever doing the recipes at Blue Apron, thumbs up, two thumbs up. You really make it simple. That's what I love about it. It's so simple, so fresh, so easy. Go to blueapron.com slash twist. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. 